Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on string matching and more specifically on the Boyer Moore force pull algorithm to solve this problem. Let's start by explaining what string matching is and why it's important. We have two strings or two arrays of characters as these are represented in many programming languages and basically we want to identify whether our pattern P is included as a whole in the text string T. Um, put it more simply, whether P is a substring of T. String matching is found everywhere in our everyday lives, including web searching, database searching, and document scanning. The first uh, method that comes to mind to solve this problem would be the naive method, as it's uh, usually called and it uh, includes um, comparing characters from the bat pattern to the text string and moving along. The comparing can start either from left or right. When you get a match of a character you simply move to the next uh, character in the pattern and when a mismatch occurs we simply shift our pattern by one to start comparing uh, our pattern uh, with the part of the text string one position to the right. Uh, this move by one is also called a skip by one. So here E and A give a mismatch, so we will move along by one. R and A give a mismatch again. T and A give a mismatch, we move along by one. Here we have a match. So what do we do? We compare the second character to the character next in the text string. We get a match. At DNA we get a mismatch that makes us move along by one. Uh, RNA do not match, so we move again by one. Until we have reached the end of our text string or we have found a match. When a match is found, uh, the most algorithms would return a position of the match. Um, in this case, this is 6. Or if the pattern is not included in the text string, they return now. As you may have guessed, this is rather inefficient. Or to put it more correctly, we can do better. One of the algorithms that uh, solve string matching and one the one of the most widely used is the Boyer Moore horse pull algorithm. This starts matching from right to left, as you can see, and takes advantage of some trivial facts about string matching. Firstly, if a letter in the text string stri causes a mismatch, we can directly move to the place where that letter appears in the pattern. So T here makes us shift by 3 to align with the T in our pattern and then start comparing normally again. Secondly, if the letter does not appear in the pattern at all, we can move the pattern all the way past it. So T and F don't match, we will move all the way past T and start comparing again. This clearly works as T will be compared to characters, it will definitely not match, so we're simply wasting time if we don't skip larger distances. To achieve this, the boyer moore horsepool algorithm requires a pre-processing stage, where basically we store the skip value for each letter in our alphabet. Here is the pseudocode for it. And let's see that work. So phase 1 initializes all letters skip value to f, that is the size of our pattern. As you can see the skip table on the bottom right, and all the letters in it initialized to 6. Second phase um, requires us to change that value for all the letters that appear in the pattern. And we change that number to m minus j minus 1, where m is the size of our pattern, j is the index of a letter in the pattern, so for example b 
uh, has an index of 0 here, minus 1. We do this for all the letters except the rightmost one, as this um, is the first to be compared to the text string, and it's going to be compared anyway, so we don't need a skip value for it. Here is pre-processing at work. So for B, we have uh, M, which is 6, uh, its uh, index is 0, so minus 0, minus 1. We write 5 in the skip table, as you can see uh, at the bottom right. Do the same for R, this gives 4. Same for E, this is 3. Same for F, this gives 2. And then we encounter a B again. We simply calculate the number again and overwrite our old number. This essentially means that the skip value we have in our table is the skip value of the rightmost occurrence of a letter. Now that we have our skip table ready, we can move to the searching part, the pseudocode for which is given here. Let's see the algorithm at work. So we have our pattern and the skip table for it, which we prepared earlier, in a text string of size 30. Now we start comparing letters, starting from the right. E matches with E, same with P, move to F and A. This mismatch. So do we look at the skip value for A? No. We have to look at the skip value for E. That is the rightmost letter in our text string that aligns with the pattern. Skip value for E is 3, so we move along by 3. What we do is to essentially align the E we have been looking at in our text string with the E in our pattern. After we have moved, we proceed normally to compare the rightmost letter. Here we get a mismatch between E and F and we have to look at F's skip value, which is 2. Thus we will um, move the pattern to the right by 2 and align our F's again. We compare E with R, get a mismatch. The value in the skip table for R is 4, so we move along by 4, again aligning the two R's. E and A give a mismatch, but in this case A does not appear in the pattern at all. So we will move by a distance equal to the size of the pattern, that is 6. After moving by 6 we proceed normally, E gives a match, B gives a match, F and R give a mismatch. So we will move along by the skip value of E. E and F give a mismatch, so F has a skip value of 2, we move by 2, start comparing again, E and R give a mismatch, we move by 4, that is the skip value for R, and start comparing again, E with E, B with B, F with F, E with E, R with R, B with B, until we find much. The value return here is 24. Uh, this was the algorithm. Let's talk about a bit about its performance. So pre-processing always takes big O of M plus K. And this is because as you've seen in our pseudocode, we have two for loops. Uh, one going through all the letters in our alphabet and one going through all our letters in the pattern. Uh, as far as searching is concerned, the worst case for searching is big O of n times m. And this happens when we have two strings which look like the two strings we have here. The best case for searching is big O of n over m, not also happens with two strings that look like this. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was a helpful tutorial.